Hackers Headbangers. I'm here with Michael Schenker and uh, we're having here the mystery box, the Headbangers Lifestyle Black Box. What's in it? We're gonna find out soon. Uh, Michael, please yeah. open the box and take out items and just say something Somebody's about it. Something's gonna jump in my hand. Yes. Ping! <laughs> da, 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 da. That reminds me of me being six years old and playing, I mean, I just picked it up because it was sitting there. Alle meine Entchen schwimmen auf dem See. My mom and my dad and I think Rudolf and somebody else, they went like... <laughs> <laughs> that was the start of your career. It was a bit squeaky, <laughs> yeah. you know, but, but I got the tones. Yeah, so that's a good memory of you. Yeah. Do you feel you have you missed out on childhood? Being huh? so, do you have a feeling you missed out on childhood? Uh, I, I, missed, so I missed out on new clothes because I had to wear everything that my brother is seven years older. <laughs> Can you imagine a suit that he wore seven years before and I put the same suit on for my confirmation? You know, oh. out of style. But the good thing about it was it was a humble upbringing and that's why I can be there I can be anywhere. It's like I can feel comfortable everywhere. Also, I've experienced in life, you know, I've been happy and, and sad when I was rich and poor, but, you know, in both situations. So it is not about money, honestly. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I, I, I picked too many. This is the beginning, you know, I mean, the one before was an introduction, but this is the beginning of my life in England, 17 and a half years old. This is where I started to develop my guitar playing, and from here on, up to Strangers in the Night, every year it was a big step forward, all the way up to Strangers in the Night, even Love Drive Scorpions that opened, and I helped to open the doors for America, but here is when it started, UFO, the band that I always told the Scorpions if I would ever be asked um, if I would, uh, uh, you know, by an English band to join, I would do it any time. Because in Germany, th th there, was not, there was no interest in what I was doing. And England was the place where it was actually a profession. <laughs> it was accepted as a profession. So, so I, I that, that's, you know, that's why I went there. It wasn't actually about, I actually turned them from a psychedelic band into a rock band. So, you know, basically, I'm very grateful, you know, and, and I couldn't speak English, so it was all about music. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it started. That was the beginning, and there's a song on here called, Lons well, it's a Lonesome Crow, I think it's the instrumental too. And, uh, and then the UFO version, I, I, I always wanted to have a long instrumental, it was Rock Bottom. That was the continuation. And uh, I keep playing this song today, and it's actually one of my favorite songs to play on stage because I have this whole piece in the middle where I can express the joy and my passion for the, for the single string. The, the art of lead guitar playing with pure self-expression. Beginning of chapter two. <laughs> this was when I was just before then, you know, just I think here, what time did they come out? Oh, did you, by the way, knew that this is Gary Barden? <laughs> this is actually oh, Gary really? Barden, yeah. This cool. is Gary Barden, and this is the, the girlfriend from Peter Mensch at the time, and this is her brother. <laughs> but this was the... Um, you know, the beginning of, 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 of my first attempts of, of a solo career where, you know, I decided to look for an unknown singer and do small things. <laughs> but Peter Mensch, you know, kind of uh, had bigger things in mind for me. So it took a little while before I diminished to nothing <laughs> in order to come back in full life. <laughs> I, he, got, he got beauties in here. I, I love it. I love it. Led Zeppelin, my favorite band, and uh, and with Stairway 
was was that way to happen the solo is you know my old time favorite solo um one of them the other one is leslie west and then but for some reason the funny thing is even though he plays one of my favorite lead breaks you know the one that is my favorite lead guitarist is actually jeff beck mm -hmm. but in general you know yeah. overall he is just the, the best you know but Jimmy Page did some beauties, I tell you, out yeah. of nowhere, since I've been loving you and stuff like that. And my one of my favorite songs, dum -tick 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 ah, yeah. the, the immigrant song. Yes. Oh, fantastic. And stay with to heaven. Unbelievable. <laughs> is it stars or sticks? Stars, here it is. Oh, and actually, I was wondering if there's place yeah. in your life for charity. The, the thing with charity, the, the one problem I have with charity is that do you know you don't really know if it gets where it's supposed to get yeah it, it, it is a problem and and do you know what over and over and over people discover on tv you know it's like it was abused yeah. of course bloody charity is important you know but you want to know where it goes you know so you know but at the end of the day you know it's it's just like if everybody doubts it, then nothing will ever happen, yeah. you know? It's a fine line, but I think maybe important is to be more cautious about how you do it, where you do it. Uh, probably, uh, well, even in music, you know, uh, you know, is, is the, do they have an agenda or is it is a pure charity? Yeah. That, that's always the question, you know? So in a way, if you really want to do it right and, and and be sure maybe the, the the best way would be in a in a way to go as far as you can by yourself to get to the source as far as you can yeah. and then do it directly you know yeah. probably yeah. <laughs> Bini, uh, oh, is that's... image or clothing or a certain style important to you well the thing is like this um, I, I think I have in my gene, in my gene, naturally, mm -hmm. the ability to be a fashion designer. Because we have that in our, you know, my sister is, has been doing lots of clothes for musicians. Mm -hmm. And I think Rudolf has got that too. We, are, we have it, naturally. And my father, he was an architect. And so he was building houses and, uh, and, and I'm building music, I'm building songs, you know. So that's an architecture. And so that's why the word creativity is in there. And actually, I love to be creative with clothes too, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, so, but you know, it's just like, a, it, it's kind of weird because like, just kind of, uh, you know, like the, 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 the for instance, like the, the, the people say like, uh, um, you know, the, the flying V, you know, and, and, and stuff like that. A lot of stuff, the way I look, it just kind of is put together step by step, you know, it's just kind of not a complete thing. But I must admit, I think I've always, I mean, I had I used to have long boots up to here. Oh, wow. So I think I have always been very kind of naturally interested in making that part of my creative process. Yeah. Spinal Tap. Yeah, you know, to be honest, it, 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 I actually did an interview with them when they, when they did the premiere, you know, and uh, the, <laughs> it, it, is, it is funny, but it's not funny, honestly. It, it's funny in a way, but some of the things are not really right. It, it's just okay. kind of weird, because if you're a musician, you, you understand why, but it is funny in a way, but... Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, because I'm not really, I've been, I've been out of the scene for so long, and music for me is actually something very, um, what is, how you call it, it's, it's very spiritual and very pure and true. And I think what they were joking about was the wannabes, you know, but they included some people who I really respect, you know. Um, so I have mixed feeling about it because it's not perfectly done, 
<laughs> there are mistakes in there, you know. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> Did you have your, your own Spinal Tap moment? Yeah, oh, we, we, we walked for, for, for hours to get to the stage. Yes, ah, we did that. Classic. <laughs> Up and down and this way. Actually, yeah. my son Taro just recently did that. <laughs> Amy and I, we were lucky because the promoter was bringing us short, we are in, in, in Japan, we are shortcut straight into the, into the, right in front of the hotel room, yeah? yeah. I don't know how we got there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Taro, my son, and the rest of the band, they went, uh, um, uh, uh, they were led by, by somebody else. Yeah. So they ended up in this elevator. I mean, imagine, you, you think you're in the elevator of a hotel and, you, and the elevator opens and they're in a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> it's just unbelievable. And the funniest part is they videoed it. That they were actually filming why they did the, because they could not fly. It wasn't just the, the only place, the, the hospital. They, they ended up in all sorts of different. In, somehow in that building, there were so many different departments which we never <laughs> knew that they ended up. You know, and you know what happened in the end? They actually they could have just walked outside and go into the front of the yeah. of the of the of the building because that's where they ended up. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Yes. And? Maybe you can read it. <laughs> Definitely. You agree? I'm not, I'm getting, not getting old. I'm getting better. It, it's actually very true. I have said that for a long time, you know. But uh, I mean, that, you know, uh, uh, physically, it's it's a, it's a impossible not to get old, you know. Uh, but you know, you can you can kind of stretch it. <laughs> yeah. You can kind of slow it down. But spiritually, you know, it's like I hear so many. You know, like Ted McKenna just said it recently, and I've said it for many, for many years, you know, I still feel like an 18-year-old boy, yeah. you know, and uh, Ted said that the other day, you know, and, and it, it's, it's amazing, you know, that you can feel like that, and he kind of explained it the way he saw it, and it was like, he, he thinks it has something to do with music, you know, it's yeah. connected on that level, and, and it's a very fortunate thing to have, a gift, you know, that, that, uh, uh, I, I'm sure that uh, a 16-year-old doesn't see us as an 18-year-old. <laughs> you know, but, but honestly, I see myself that age. It's uh, yeah. really funny. Yeah. It's really funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, here it comes. And so, when this man died, and I just joined UFO. And I was uh, 17 and a half when I arrived there, so I must have been, it happened kind of probably just three, four months after I was in England. I got a phone call from someone saying, Michael, uh, would you be interested in auditioning for the Rolling Stones? And I went, the Rolling Stones? Hang on a second, I'll call you back. <laughs> And then I called my brother Rudolf and said, can you believe somebody just called me and asked me if I would be interested in audition for the Rolling Stones. What do you think? He said, like, well, you, you, it's your life, you must, yeah. you know, it's, it's up to you, I have nothing I can do for you. He said, okay, you know, but I tell you, I remember, well, he just, he, he just died and then, and then I saw, I remember pictures of them looking into each other's hair for lies. I said, like, if I join this band, I'm going to be dead in two years, <laughs> you know? And, and, and so the funny thing is that Ronnie Wood, he, he, got, he got the job, yeah? He's a Michael Schenker fan. Oh, wow. He came with all of his children and his wives or whatever, it was so many people, into my dressing room when we did the, um, um, in 83, I think, we did MSG, Hammersmith, and he introduced his whole family to me. And he was giving autographs downstairs and said like, hey, Michael Schenker, I'm Michael Schenker fan, and stuff like that. Oh, I, I, it was amazing. So we, we have been, you know, I think we also ended up on one video together, uh, like an instructional video, and, and he did one. And I think he was very happy that he was on the same video with me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Ronnie Wood, he has come a long way. And But uh, the Rolling Stones, you know, yeah. I could have turned them into a, a, a hard rock band or maybe a metal band. <laughs> Who knows? Anything is possible, really. If you can do it to a psychedelic band, UFO. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Michael Foss, you work with him closely? How did, where is he? There he is. No way, sweetheart. <laughs> Michael Foss, can you believe it? Oh, yeah. 
That, that doesn't even look anything like him. Do you know Michael <laughs> Foss? No. That is <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> what happened? I don't know, but he's an important guy in your life now, in your creative... Well, Michael Foss is a Michael Schenker just... fan and a Gary Barton fan and a uh, MSG fan. And he, he actually copied everything from MSG. He told me, it's not a secret. And um, so basically, um, when, Mike, when, when, when Gary Barton, um, 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 you know, uh, uh, finished with Michael Schenker group and, and uh, Michael Foss found out about it. He connected with, uh, with Gary and he started working with him and then uh, Gary and Michael Foss, they wanted me to help Gary on his album and so I went over and I played a solo on his, on, on his solo album and that's how I met Michael Foss. And so uh, then I did O Tannebaum where Dora was singing and I was playing the guitar like a, a Christmas song and, and uh, you know, so it kind of more and more. And then I was ready to make a demo um, in, in, in uh, what was the year, 2000, uh, when the first Temple of Rock came out with, with, uh, with all these musicians on it, maybe 2010, 11. Uh, yeah, I was I just moved to Brighton and uh, I was doing something with Pete Way and, and Herman Rebel and I said, uh, we were working on a live performance and uh, I said like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I'm, it's time for me to make a new album, I'm gonna go to Michael Foss and uh, do it, make a demo. And so I went to his studio and, uh, and so I started putting my first song on, on tape, uh, you know, with click track and put the drums to it. And, and then I said like, well, Michael, can you help me out with, a, with a guide, some guide vocals, you know? So I, I have more of something. I actually was singing something that I wanted him to sing. And he started singing and went like, Michael, you can actually sing? Why don't you sing on this album? He said, wow, yeah, fantastic, that's great, you know. And so that was the first um, Michael Schenker Temple of Rock album with Carmen Epley, Simon Phillips, Paul Raymond, all of these musicians, you know, from the 80s and, and, and fantastic. And Chris Slade, Chris Glenn, I mean, the, the, the list is endless. And so, you know, from then on, and then, and then I wanted to go on a world tour, and then Michael Foss all of a sudden said, like, oh, I'm, I'm not available, I'm, I, I just signed a solo deal. <laughs> well, thank you, you know? And so I asked Robin to help me out in America, and then Michael Foss was available for Japan, and then um, Doogie was available for, that was, by the way, also Doogie's first song on that album, Before the Devil Knows You're Dead, fantastic. And, uh, and, 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 and then Doogie was ready for the tour in, in, uh, in, the, in the Europe. And then the, uh, Chris, uh, uh, Pete Way, he got sick. And then I asked Herman, why don't you ask Francis Buchholz if he can help out? Then Francis oh. Buchholz, <laughs> and that became the Temple of Rock. And yeah. from then on, we yeah. went all the way up there. Yeah. And from then on, you know, uh, um, I made the next record and I remembered how great our teamwork was Michael Foss and I, and because he understood everything I was saying, and I'm not surprised because he he, he studied my psychology. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, I, I don't have to say much, he understands. Plus he's such a great, he's a genius, you know, he's such a great musician and he has such a great ear. And when you start building something, you know, he always comes up with a gimmick and, hey, why don't we put a window here? Or, you know, he comes up with those little details, they are fantastic, you know, and a lot of fun. And he has a really good, really good sense of um, getting great sounds and stuff like that. So I'm very happy with Michael. Yeah. And I'm sure Michael's very happy with me. And, and, and of course, I have uh, introduced to Michael for us. A, a, a big, big, big international world that he was fan of, you know. Yeah. I mean, Michael Schenker is a, I mean, Michael Foss is an 80s junkie. I mean, period. He wanted to be, he wanted to shine in the 80s yeah. and it was not meant to be for him. And, yeah. and he came out a little late in the 90s and, and so, but I think I always told him, don't worry about it, Michael. You, what's meant to be for you will unfold in front of you. You'll be surprised, you know. It's going to take a twist. You will never even have thought like, wow, yeah. you know. You could have never created that yourself. It will all happen in a very unique way. Well, what is this? This there's goes around your neck. Yeah, but there's a, a cross. Ah, okay. Of course. Of course, a cross. And of course, um, well, you have this, this phrase on your arm, if I'm correct. Uh, not important, but God is. You have that as a tattoo, right? A what? A tattoo on your arm with... Uh, uh, that does say, not important, but God is? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, so I, I, what's, I, what's the meaning of 
that's oh, okay. I've always, I've always had a relationship with something bigger than myself. You know, I mean, that is the, the anchor. You know, that is the the, the gold within me that that always kept me. Even if I looked like I was breaking, it kept me together. You know, all the time, because I was always, I always knew. You know, that there is a, you know, a, a, I, I can't be it. You know, it must be something bigger than self, and so. I, I, um, I, you know, I, I, I don't remember saying I want to be born now, and and, and I'm surely not going to say um, now I'm I'm going to die. It's all just going to happen, you know. It yeah. must be, <laughs> must happen somehow. So you know, so so you know, I just kind of there's something bigger than me, and some people call it God, some people call it whatever, you know. And so, but there is something bigger, and that that is it. And and I, I put this tattoo on there first, the Mercedes, you know, yeah. wherever it is, I don't even know now here, um, <laughs> the Mercedes star because I, I'm. I'm I'm, I'm a, I am a, a Mercedes fan, you know, I don't know how, how it happened, when it happened, probably when my brother was playing with cars, I remember he passing me on, but it was a Porsche, and he, actually it was a toy Porsche, and he later, when he was uh, uh, 20 or 22, he got exactly that same car. A, a, a oh. what do you call it, like a, ver a, 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 no, a vintage, vintage sports of exactly the same toy car. Oh, wow. and, uh, and, you know, anyway, so, so Mercedes became that, that, that thing in my head, maybe it was influenced by Rudolf, I don't know, but, uh, but uh, at some point I was in Arizona and, and, and I was thinking of a, of, a, of a tattoo and I thought like, hey, yeah, I love Mercedes, <laughs> so put it there. Then later, you know, kind of two years later maybe, I thought like, it's actually stupid. Why why did I do that? You know. So I kind of. But no. But it's interesting because it brought me to that place where I went like, you know what, Michael? That's not important. You know. I mean, it's great to have a Mercedes. You know, it's great to have luxury. But that's not it. Yeah. You know. There is something that is more important, and that is basically what that means. You know. Yeah. Don't get stuck there with that a thing. Yeah. A thing is just a thing. You know. But there's something more, there's something beyond. So it became very meaningful to me. Yeah. I, I, I thought I can pick myself out of ah. I have to <laughs> pick it up. Oh, oh I just... love it. You know, when people ask Amy and me if we would like fork and knife, no. This is what we want. Yeah. Chopsticks. We love eating with chopsticks. She yeah. can even she can even catch flies with chopsticks. Oh. <laughs> But I have gotten very good with this because, I mean, like, not very good, but like, I've been doing this since the Japanese asked me to come over, you know, yeah. in like 81. And, uh, and so I can't remember actually how long it took me to eat, like, with this. But I, don't, I do remember that, that rubber, you know, to, to help you with it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, it was kind of, uh, but today it's no problem, you yeah. know. And, and so, yeah, we love, uh, I, I love sashimi. And actually, in fact, that's what I get in my breaks. I get sashimi. Can I use them? Yeah, <laughs> They're probably course. used. But Japan is, is very important in your career, right? As huh? a country. Japan is quite important oh, okay. in your well, career. Yeah, yeah. That, that I, and that identifies with Japan at the yeah. same time because that's where I learned eating with this. And, you know, Japan has been. Japan is a beautiful country. And it has, um, you know, in 81, first, I had the first uh, pleasure, you know, to, to be over there and. Uh, and 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 it, it was just amazing because even on the street it looked like a showroom. You know, I, I felt like uh, are we in the, in some kind of a car showroom? Where's the car? you know? Yeah, it was just yeah. like amazing, beautiful people, very you know, uh, very very respectful and very friendly and 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 it's just like it's a different level. Honestly, it's like just very. I was very impressed by it, and of course. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I was uh, immediately, because people were waiting for me uh, since the Lonesome Crow, I mean, since I was 15 years old and doing the Lonesome Crow album with the Scorpions, and so I never showed up over there. I joined UFO and never showed up over there. Then I did my own band, and then, of course, then Peter Mensch, the ACDC manager, he made everything possible, you know, and so he sent me, uh, you know, we, we were actually recording uh, the second MSG album, and at the same time, as he was mixing the album, we were already recording live at the Budokan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Japan uh, uh, loves lead guitar playing, you know, that, that exact the same combination that I'm in love with is like Rod Stewart yes. and Jeff Beck. 
yeah. Jimmy Page and, and Robert Plant. And you know, it's stuff like that. Yeah. And, and it's that beautiful combination between a great singer and a great guitarist, where the singer, he takes on the song, and then the, the, the guitarist takes it, make, takes it to another place, an adventure, and then the singer takes it back to... And the, and the Japanese, they understand yeah. what I do, and they love that kind of stuff themselves. And you know, even in the middle years, when I was experimenting, you know, they supported me all the way, because they, they actually know where it comes from when I do that, and, and they, they just like what I do, and, and, and they have always been there. And they are still there, and, and, and especially now when we do the Michael Schenker Fest, it's, like, it's fantastic. Yeah. And you know, incredible thing is because it, you see your fans grow up with you. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. And they are, you know, most of them are still there, and, and they must be incredible, as incredible as it for me that they can see all of us, you know, together yeah. on one stage, you know. Yeah. Um, with Gary and with uh, Graham and Robin, and now with Doogie, and uh, well, you know, it's mm. like we re revisit, you yeah. know, it's like yeah. re-experience, and for the newcomers, of course, they can see how it may have been, how it may used to be, you know, yeah. or very close to it. An empty paper, which yeah, actually and an empty box, almost, <laughs> uh, almost. I'm oh, sorry, I'll have to quick. Empty paper, Me. this is what really, really interesting because that's what, you know, um, I learned something in my middle years that, uh, you know, you can actually clean your mind and fill it with anything that you think is worth filling it with. And you can actually at any time reinvent yourself or, or if you're capable of Forgetting about the past and cl clean and 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 from the now, you can put on this empty space what you really love and what you really enjoy, etc., etc. So it's really never too late. That's that's for me with an empty, you know, it's like you know the the, the Buddhists they do like they create something and then. Mm -hmm. Then they destroy it. The funny oh, wow. thing is, I had an album called Built and Built to Destroy. It is the funniest thing because for me, it didn't really occur like that. But to, today, I mean, because I, I smashed up my own Mercedes, you know, but, but it is like that, you know. Yeah. It's like the ability to create something and then let go. Yeah. yeah it's the fantastic. I think that is the, uh, if we keep, if, if that becomes more and more, uh, naturally, and we can do that. It, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's the, the way to peace. You know, it's just like the, the, not being attached to things to let go at, at any time. You know, empty yeah. piece of paper is there to be filled with new things. The last one. Yeah, and an empty box. And there's a um, box. Escape from the box. I even <laughs> can talk about the box, but let's talk about this first. G7's family jewels. Yeah. Uh, so MSG Loud Park support band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some artists really like to do reality shows and all that, but how important is family life? To okay, you? let me tell you. I, I will tell you the story, okay? We had a concert. I was about 18, 19 in Chicago, T-Rex, KISS and UFO on the same stage. When the show was over, everybody was packing and, uh, you know, of course, KISS was playing with their makeup on and stuff like that. So I hang around in the hall and I watched people breaking down the equipment and I went to the front of the stage. There was this guy with curly hair so, so what, what do you think of KISS? So, oh, no, not, not so my thing. Um, just a while later, my brother Rudolf, he was playing with KISS, and apparently he went towards one of the KISS guys, said like, hey, my brother Michael Schenker, he's a big fan of yours. And then one guy said, bullshit, he hates us. <laughs> And another, another story about Gene, 
is I did a I did a hang uh, I I did a um, um, a project called uh, um, Ending Hunger by the year 2000, and it was uh, around 80 uh, 90, 91 or 92. So the project was, you know, I had an idea. I had to be specific. So it was like a, it was like a, 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 a like a, a what do you call it breakthrough program, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to come up with specifics, you know. So I was telling, yeah, what I'm going to be doing to go towards, you know, ending hunger by the year 2000. So one idea was to invite scorpions and uh, Aerosmiths and and uh, 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 you know K uh, Gene Simmons or Kiss, uh, you know, to read a paragraph. Um, of a video that was actually talking about how to make it possible to help people to help themselves. And I wanted, you know, because I knew that maybe famous people, you know, uh, uh, reading a couple of minutes of it, it would have an effect on people. And plus, the information of it was beautiful, was great, you know, to understand the concept of helping yeah. people to help themselves. And uh, <laughs> I was um, you know, somebody had a connection to to Gene Simmons and was calling him. You know, asked him, "Hey, would you would you like to be part of this? You know, and and help? You know, Michael is working on this project, uh, ending hunger by the year 2000." He said, "What do you think? This is rock and roll. Are you joking?" <laughs> <laughs> and then I asked the scorpions, and and they were just laughing. Yeah. <laughs> because because I went actually on the on a hunger strike because I was so frustrated and I was so uh, actually disappointed that nobody would wanted to be part of that, you know. And uh, you know, it was just interesting that you know you asked you asked that your people, you know, who I gave coast to coast to at the yeah. present, but they're just laughing, you yeah. know. And I actually went on a hunger strike for eleven days because Whoa. of that. Yeah, it was, it, that was an experience in itself. I imagine. <laughs> Empty box. Empty box. Es escape from the box. Yes. Oh, Michael, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching Happiness Lifestyle.